Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Uh, welcome to JOD Traders Espresso with me, Darius and Charles, because today's the 3rd of April uh, 2020. So yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Friday's uh, morning recorded session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, um, the usual stuff. Uh, but before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimers. So the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, it should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, so um, as always, guys, before we um, jump into the charts, a quick mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel to which you can always um, subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. Um, and of course, our JFD Bank website and specifically our JFD research page, which we also update on a daily basis. So, yep, feel free to visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there. Um, right now, then. Uh, also, before we jump into the charts, as usual, uh, the usual now uh, that has become a usual now to quickly have a look what's happening here in the world uh, in regards to the coronavirus. Now, uh, this was the figure uh, yesterday um, during my trader's tea time, and uh, if I refresh this right now, let's see: have we hit the million or have we not hit the million? Um, so. Yes, we have re breached uh, the 1 million mark of inf uh, total infections globally um, and of course the total amount of deaths has, has risen as well. So, um, But the the good part here is at least the total recovered uh, and the number of total recovered is, is also rising. So we can see that the uh, US suddenly picked up the pace, uh, well actually it picked up the pace already last week, at the end of last week and uh, started uh, overcoming all, all, all other countries and you can see that it, it has managed to overcome Italy twice already, So, but only by the amount of infections. In terms of deaths, um, uh, United States is... Um, well, they're sh it's showing that there's no data for now. So the, uh, Italy here is at around 13,915 total deaths, and there we go. The U.S. is around 6,000. So, but again, the, uh, the the speed at which the number continues to grow here is quite uh, significant. So, yep, uh, it's not really looking good here for the U.S. Uh, Europe is trying to maintain this. I mean, China is uh, has been maintaining this nicely. Um, however, of course, uh, as some skeptics could say that, um, how could you really trust these numbers? I mean, um, again, from now, for now, we're just going from what we have because in a way, to be honest, no one knows exactly how, how much, what are the real numbers and what, you know, what, um, what's the real situation out there. So again, for now, uh, we can only go from what we have here and, uh, yep, we'll, that's how we will evaluate, uh, everything going further. Uh, now then jumping into a few charts. Uh, so the first one I want to touch on here is the German DAX, um, quick update on this I mean I'm not gonna spend too much time on it because again the same the same situation remains I mean for the whole week uh, you can see that the index continues to kind of balance in between these two lines here the uh, the approximately 10,000 zone here and the 9,461 territory um, but uh, for the downside as I've mentioned previously we need to see a drop below this level here the uh, 9,140 zone because this is from where we could become a little bit more comfortable with further declines again for now as long as it kind of remains in the oldest territory it will remain neutral and uh, even with the downside here and we need to see a nice good pop above the uh, psychological 10,000 zone and only then we could aim for higher levels so for now guys keep your eyes on this one uh, now the uh, the main story here is WTI oil or in other words just oil um, of course overnight 
we did get some uh, news in regards to uh, a deal between Saudi Arabia and Russia. And this is what I was talking about yesterday. Uh, that until we kind of until that gets clarified, uh, oil might be might might remain under pressure. So yesterday we had a nice pop here higher, but um, as I've mentioned previously in my videos that um, in order for us to get comfortable with higher levels we would like to see a nice good uh, push and a, ideally maybe a daily close above the 26.08 level and uh, then yes we could aim for higher levels because um, this level here the 26.08 is the lowest point of 2016 and in a way if we do get a nice daily close above this then yes we will aim for higher levels again for now we yesterday we got a pop above this but it didn't really close above this uh, above this level. So the, all this situation right now is kind of uh, making us a little bit uh, neutral, I would say, or should I say keeps keeps us neutral uh, because in order to aim even lower, let's say we need to see a breakthrough uh, this level here, the uh, psychological 20 zone and uh, preferably we would like to see a nice good daily close a nice good strong daily close below this uh, 20 territory and then yes we could aim for lower levels for now we're just waiting when just observing these two levels the 26.08 on the upside and the psychological 20 mark on the downside so for now to be honest there's not much to say uh, apart from wait for that confirmation daily close um, outside of this uh, this little range uh, gold so uh, gold um, this is working out exactly uh, what I was talking well, and how I was talking about it uh, in my previous videos, uh, where I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on the territory, the uh, 1575 territory, which could provide good support, um, and uh, it did. And you can see that the commodity, the precious metal, traveled higher and pushed, managed to push above the 1611 zone. That this is what I was talking about yesterday. Um, now today we're seeing a bit of a correction here. Um, although we had a nice close yesterday above this so in a way what we're gonna do here we're gonna stick to the upside and uh, we're gonna continue targeting um, slightly higher levels initially our target is going to be this high of last week near the 1645 zone and uh, then yes after that if we do get a break above this yep we'll start aiming for higher levels because this would confirm a forthcoming higher high and yep more buyers could be joining in here for now uh, we'll be very careful and cautious however uh, the fact that it managed to climb and close a daily candle above the 1611 territory that kind of uh, gives a bit more hope for the buyers and uh, that's why we will remain somewhat positive for now don't get me wrong if this suddenly starts dropping back down again uh, still uh, this area for us will be a key one to watch around the 1575 zone because if it holds uh, we could see another round of uh, or another rebound here and a push higher um, and the only thing is of course maybe I'm just getting trying to get a bit of ahead of myself here but let's say this decides to drift lower here and uh, uh, it moves to the downside again towards this 1575 zone then we will be probably getting ourselves somewhat of a potential like a, a descending triangle here but again that's a bit too early to talk about this um, we are again like I said we are more bullish than bearish on this one right now but just in case if this decides to reverse back down and drift a little bit lower consider a potential descending triangle here uh, but it, it, it um, I need to specify that it doesn't mean that we would break to the downside here of course according to all the technical rules such formations tend to break to the downside uh, but um, uh, but yes, I mean, we have seen this happening uh, in the opposite way several times. So that's why uh, we'll just wait for the con for a confirmation break. For now, let's get rid of this downside line. Let's not overcomplicate our life. Um, and uh, for now, we are, like I said, more bullish than bearish. And uh, we will aim for the uh, 1645 zone, especially if it continues to balance above the 1611 territory. Um, jumping into a crypto, uh, so here it's a little bit of a mess. Um, I've looked at this one recently, and let me just jump into a four hour chart. Now, here, what I was talking about previously that we needed to see a nice good daily close. Uh, this is a four hour chart, by the way, but uh, we needed to see a nice daily close above this uh, 0 0.1760 zone and uh, looking at the daily chart 
you can see that uh, we did get a close um, and uh, now the crypto is trading a little bit above it so in a way of course according to the technical analysis rules yes there is more chance for this one right now to drift higher however uh, given that it's uh, the volatility here, uh, well, not even the activity, I would say, even just in general, the uh, trading activity is very on is on the low side, and uh, uh, for now, uh, what we're going to do here is just continue monitoring this. Yes, the fact that it closed above the daily candle, closed above the 0 0.1760 uh, territory, of course, that creates a bit more opportunity here for the bulls. However, this this movement is very. Um, very weak and uh, in a way that's why we will remain a little bit on the cautious side and uh, for now what we're going to do here is just um, basically continue monitoring this yes we will aim for the upside uh, now the way we could look at this is in order to get a little bit more comfortable with higher levels we would like to see a push above this barrier um, because like I said we'll go slowly slowly on this one um, and this barrier is around the 0 0.801876 now uh, don't get me wrong for now like I said we are more positive than negative we will continue aiming higher um, as long as it remains above this upside line but if suddenly this starts dropping and suddenly this upside line starts breaking well this is where it could turn out to be ugly for uh, for for ripple and uh, especially if it also falls below the 0 0.1620 territory so yep keep your eyes on this one right now guys uh, DXY so the dollar index yesterday I talked about this one and uh, what I was saying that if we get a nice good close above the uh, the 99.91 zone then yes there is a good likelihood we could see this one pushing further north for now that's the situation where we're going to consider because again uh, we had a nice close it traveled uh, above this territory above this 99.91 barrier which we uh, which I've talked about yesterday and in a way all this kind of still looks uh, a little bit more on the positive side uh, don't get me wrong today we do have a special day of course uh, in the US economy it's uh, the US non-farm payrolls um, now the expectations uh, there are for a sh uh, well sharp decline and basically the number is expected to be below zero uh, at around 100k um, so yes I mean here I mean this couldn't probably work well would would work not in the favor of the US dollar um, if the number comes out uh, let's say the same as expected or even higher uh, but if the number comes out uh, slightly better than the um, uh, than the forecast of 100 uh, minus 100 K then um, the, the the dollar could in a way just continue balancing here around this territory um, could be maybe or even could even push higher a little bit here uh, not much maybe but just uh, yep continue drifting further north for now from the technical side yes we are leaning more towards the upside um, however we'll be very careful like I said when the news is going to come out and uh, yep I would really strongly recommend not to trade during the news wait for the reaction and then try to capture something there because again it's always difficult to try to predict uh, we, we we would like to react um, after after um, the the news comes out so yep guys for now like I said keep your eyes on this one from now from the technical side yes it is it is looking more positive than negative uh, but we do have some news today so keep your eyes on those ADJPY now here the situation is a little bit difficult so um, basically let me just get rid of this downside line is no longer needed and uh, what we're going to focus here on is mainly on some of these key support and resistance levels now looking at the daily chart still here you can see that yesterday we did get a drop below this territory below this 64.92 zone but uh, well as you can see that the daily candle didn't even close below this so we did get a drop below it but uh, it's still closed above this zone above this territory above this support level uh, at 64.92 now 
previously I talked about uh, the upside here where in order to, for us to consider the upside we needed to see a nice good push above the 70, 67.70 zone and then we could consider higher levels um, again it moved away from this for now this pair is um, a little bit tricky for us because overall yes it is still in a downtrend however after kind of falling sharply here and hitting the 59.90 level it started recovering uh, it recovered a decent amount tested the 21 uh, EMA here on the daily chart but as you can see failed to close above it so uh, can this 21 EMA continues to kind of provide decent resistance and um, we are going to keep an eye on this one if by any chance suddenly we get a nice break above this and we get a nice close above that 21 EMA uh, then yes we will aim for some higher levels especially if the uh, the pair travels above the 67.70 territory um, in terms of the downside here yes we need to see a nice good daily close below the 64.92 zone before we could aim for lower levels for now guys be very careful, be very cautious, and uh, yep, let's see how this is going to play out. And especially, like I said, keep keep your eyes on the um, on the NFPs today. Um, now then, jumping into uh, USD CAD. Now here, um, here the situation is also a bit tricky because uh, this is what I talked about yesterday, and uh, I was telling you to keep an eye on this downside line, which, as you can see continues to hold and uh, continues to act as a good area of resistance we do get these little overshoots but it's struggling uh, still to st remain above the, the pair is struggling to remain above this above this downside line and uh, in a way mm, for now what we're going to consider here is a potential maybe decline again um, if it, if if this downside line continues to hold we could see a potential decline especially uh, we will aim for the for slightly lower levels in the short run if we get a drop below these the lows of yesterday which were around which were around the uh, 1.4075 zone so a nice good drop below the 1.4075 could in a way uh, open the door here towards this this key area of support around the 1.3986 this is what I talked about yesterday because this is the more comfortable level for us after which after a break of which we could consider further declines and uh, now you can see that yes uh, f this downside line continues to hold so this is working out perfect for the bears uh, but uh, let's still remain on the cautious side again like I said we do have the NFPs today so uh, if the dollar suddenly strengthens uh, sharply then uh, well I mean we could see a nice break here to the upside however as I've mentioned previously as well yesterday, yesterday in my traders uh, tea time, we need to see a nice good um, break above and a nice good, ideally a close, a nice good day, uh, a close above the 1.4325 zone in order to aim for higher levels. Uh, for now, like I said, still the same game plan remains. Hopefully, let's see if we can uh, get some bigger moves today um, and then we'll 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 examine a further directional move if we get a break through one of these highlight areas uh, gbp usd is still the same idea uh, quick daily chart here uh, we are keeping close eye on this potential flag pattern um, now i mean this is really getting uh, a, looking a quite attractive bullish flag um, however don't get me wrong um, it could easily uh, drop lower here, could easily uh, wipe out a lot of traders who are also thinking about this, and uh, then, yep, uh, it could drift further further south. However, that's why we do have this barrier here, the um, the 1.2485 zone, which is for which we are considering as the um, as the potential breakout point after which uh, we could aim for some for some upside. Um, we will only aim for the one point if we do see a break above this uh, above this barrier above the 1.2485. We'll only aim for the 1.27 zone, uh, which is the low of the uh, 28th of February um, and um or in other words actually it's the lowest point of February and uh, which also coincides with the 200 uh, day EMA here um, that's gonna be our next target but again as I, as I clearly stated previously we need to see a break of this territory first before we could aim for higher levels although yes it is forming somewhat of a bullish flag here but um, let's not 
uh, rush into this and uh, let's wait for that confirmation break. Uh, Euro USD finally. So uh, here the situation. This is what I talked about um, yesterday in my traders tea time. So uh, what I was talking about in my, in my traders tea time that initially we were seeing a nice possible uh, veg pattern, uh, falling veg pattern. But as what I was also saying that if we get a break through this lower side of that pattern and we see a drop below the 1.0888, then we ignore this pattern because again, uh, this is got this line got violated. So uh, now it just basically the, it's playing out the fact that um, it drifted below the 1.0888 zone and now remains uh, below it. So although we could see a bit of a correction maybe at some point here, uh, but as long as it stays below this downside line, and this is what I'm saying that even if it pushes back above the 1.0888 zone, as long as it remains below this downside line, we will uh, continue targeting the downside. Um, our next target will be this one, the 1.0. 0777 uh, that's basically the lowest point of February and uh, yep uh, this could be our next target um, if it breaks here below this then it could open the path towards even lower levels here the uh, the lows of um, the low the lows of, of this year the current lows of this year which are around which are around the uh, 1.0633 zone um, again that's the situation for now yes we saw the pair drifting below this 1.0888. Yes, we are more bearish than bullish on this one. Uh, don't get me wrong, if we see a bit of a correction here to the upside, even if it pushes back above the 1.0888, still, if this downside line remains intact, then uh, we could see the bear stepping in here and driving this one lower. For those who are more on the cautious side, you could just basically simply uh, wait for a drop below the 1.0819 level. This is the low of uh, yesterday and uh, a break below this would confirm a forthcoming lower low and more sellers could be joining in here as well. So yep, keep your eyes on this one. In terms of the upside, uh, yesterday I've mentioned that this level here, yes, although it's a more comfortable level for us after which we could consider the upside, but given that we have managed already to shift a little bit more to the to the right, we can actually clearly say that this is now the level after which we could uh, start considering the upside. Now, again, I need to point this out because if we get a push above this barrier, above this 1.0952 territory, yes, we will get a nice break of this downside line, of course. Yes, we will get a break above this key area, which previously acted as a very good area of support. Now, it, it, then it acted as a key area of resistance. Uh, but still, uh, we do have the 100 EMA here, the 200 EMA on the four hour chart, which could in a way provide a bit of resistance and uh, and this is where I'm leading to that this is the le this this level here the 1.1037 is the more comfortable level for us because then we would have a break above all of these uh, obstacles here and uh, then yep it could could continue drifting further north for now uh, yes we, like I said we'll consider the upside if we get a push above the uh, 1.0952 but still we will remain a little bit more on the cautious side um, so yeah but for now the main the main uh, the main kind of uh, direction or the main uh, scenario for us is the the downside although we could see a bit of a correction and uh, especially keep your eyes on the euro dollar today because well as I said, we do have the US NFPs today. So guys, um, I really hope you found it useful. And uh, thank you very much for sticking around and watching this video till the end. Um, thank you very much for all your views and for all your likes. I really appreciate your support. Um, so if you want to catch my traders tea time later on um, at around 13, around 13, 15 uh, GMT time. Um, so yep, uh, we'll have a look at some of, the, some of these instruments, some new ones, and we'll see how everything got along um, and uh, yeah guys um, let's let's see how everything's gonna play out so anyway guys I hope you have a fantastic trading day guys stay safe and uh, catch you later thank you very much and bye bye